And here we go, the battle of the better daily trainer. It's come down to the Nike Vimero 16 2022 and the Nike Pegasus 37 slash 38 for the years 2020 and 2021. Which one's the better daily trainer? Stay tuned, here we go. What is up everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sol Platocha and as you can already guess by the title of this video, we are comparing two daily trainers within the Nike family as to which one's the better daily trainer, which is of course the Nike Vomero 16 and the Nike Pegasus 37 and 38. So before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're already subscribed to the channel and following the content, thanks so much, I love you guys a lot. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, Strava, all the other social media is listed down below. Without further ado, specs for both respective shoes will be here, I suppose, wherever they fit. And I guess we're just going to start off with seniority on this one. So let's talk about the Pegasus 37 and uh, 38. So the reason I'm referencing the 38 here is that I've owned the 38 in the past, but have returned it to Nike because I have disliked it. I'll explain more to that as we get into the build of the shoe. So of course, uh, for those who have followed this channel, I have two pairs of Pegasus 37. I have this one from quarter one, quarter two of uh, Nike 2020, which I think was like around uh, between May and June of 2020, this particular shoe. And then I bought this one in about July, August of 2020. And um, yeah, both shoes also have very different results from running in them on a daily basis. I'll get into that as we go along. So first things first, let's, let me break down the specs here. So the Pegasus 37 in particular weighs about 10 and a half ounces, which does put it close to about 300 grams on average, a little bit less perhaps. Whereas the Pegasus 38 in this case weighs slightly less. I think it hits about 9.5, 9.6 ounces. And that's mostly because the material in the upper is a lot lighter and resembles more of the Vomero 16 in the 38 than it would in the 37. So in this particular case, whoa, the Pegasus 37 has a much thicker upper to prevent more, you know, opportunities for ripping in the toe box area, anywhere in the heel guards and things like that. So this shoe in itself is a little bit more durable, but a little bit heavier than the 38 counterpart in this particular case. Also, of course, the mesh upper here is not nearly as breathable as some of the newer coming shoes, but that to me is okay. I guess, again, just to reiterate, this is to uh, bring in the strength points of the shoe because, again, this shoe at 400 plus miles with a wear like this and a wear like this on both shoes respectively has almost a perfectly good looking upper. Now, the things that make the Pegasus 38 uh, and 37 unique in the Pegasus lineup is the air zoom pocket that is located in the shoe here in the midfoot ball area of the shoe. And I think overall in this particular Pegasus 37, it was a slammer of an idea to have that air zoom pocket because you would have like this snap effect when you would run with the pocket, obviously compressing and decompressing and you get that rebound effect from the pod in that sense. Uh, other things to mention for the specs is that I believe the heel is 28 millimeters and the forefoot is about 18 millimeters, if I'm not mistaken, giving it this 10 millimeter offset, which does encourage you while you're running to have more of this forefoot strike, kind of the high heel experience running with the shoe. I think that's a good idea for daily trainers overall, but that's neither here nor there. So in particular between, I've again mentioned this in many videos in the past, these two Pegasus 37s. This one was just like, you know, it was alive, it was snapping, it was wonderful. But the issue with the second Pegasus 37 that I bought, which resembles also a different issue that I had to the Pegasus 38, is that this shoe was like extremely flat, despite having the exact same build and uh, using the exact same, you know, foams, the same air zoom pocket. It just didn't feel like the air zoom pocket was nearly as responsive. And the foam just was feeling flat and not really reactive to my running stride. So in that sense, the shoe just barely broke over 150 miles, as you can tell, not a whole lot of wear on it. And it was really just kind of upsetting overall. So the issue now when we talk about the Pegasus 38, when I recall it correctly, was that, again, very similar build, except the upper was a lot lighter. It resembled more of the Vomero 16 in this case. The trick with it is that the air zoom pocket felt slightly overinflated and it didn't feel like there was a lot of reinforcement inside of the foot on the insole to more or less protect you from the air pocket rebound effect. And what I mean by that is if this was like my foot 
and you know the inner knuckles here are like the ball of my foot or like this palm area is the ball palm of my foot uh the air zoom pockets would be either depending on the size of the shoe is either in front of the ball of the foot or is like slightly behind and it would create like this cramping headache effect and every time you landed it would just get worse and worse as it was going along to the point that I returned the Pegasus 38 and just ultimately settled with I think at the time running in either the Mach 4 or settling with I believe it was the React Infinity at the time. So these were some of the issues and gripes I had with the Pegasus 37, but I don't think too much about the bad times. I just try to remember the good times with, of course, this particular Pegasus 37. Now, let's talk about the Vomero 16 if you haven't seen the videos previously. Um, first thing I'll say, I'll show you a picture here as well. Probably not the best shoe for muddy trail running, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, once you start the run, you just kind of have to commit to it, so that's kind of what happened. Vomero 16, right. So this is the 2022 model of the Vomero family shoe. It's the only Vomero I've ever owned. The idea here, of course, is that the upper is, a, you know, using a very similar build to a lot of previous Pegasus models, so such as, like, the Pegasus 36 with, like, super breathability in this toe box. Uh, definitely a lot lighter materials in the toe area, but as we get into the heel area, we'll talk about a little bit more, a lot more stuff going on. Uh, the shoe does weigh about 10.2 ounces in my size, which is about eight and a half. And in the heel, I believe it runs out of 29 and a half millimeters, and then it's about 18 and a half in the forefoot. It does still give it about a 10 to 11 millimeter offset, which strongly resembles, of course, the Pegasus 37 and 38 family. And I think that's the basic theme with the daily trainers is to try to encourage more of the toe to midfoot strike with the high heel strike rather than having something with a slightly less offset that could potentially change your stride and maybe not work well with the the shoe in depending on what case you're running with. So of course the main uh, features of the Vomero or at least the way it's marketed is to be a very comfortable distance runner and in that case you need very specific functions and you know specs on the shoe to accomplish such a feat. So now let's get into the comparing and contrasting of both shoes. Of course let's start with the outsoles for both. I suppose this is probably not going to be the best comparison for the two but as you can see Pegasus 37 has this EVA style uh, EVA, you know, style outsole with this kind of rubber build. And the Vomero 16 follows something very similar minus the outer side of the outsole, where in this case, what was left of it, let me just, we'll use this foot. It's got like these kind of like two pieces of rubber kind of tied together on the side there, probably to create more of like, you know, more water flow through the shoe if you were running through like mud and water. Whereas in the Vomero 16, it looks more like it's doing accomplishing the same function, but maybe having more of like a road grip to it in per se. So I don't know, it's just a different design, but I think the functionality of it in this particular case will be, I'm gonna say, maybe I'm wrong on this. I'm gonna say it's negligent based on how much material we've got in similar on between both shoes in like the inside of both rubbers, right? So for example, when I was doing my trail run yesterday, this was actually really great when running downhill through mud. I thought I was gonna start slipping like I would in like other shoes, but this one just grabbed really well. And I was quite surprised about that for a road running shoe taking it out on trails. Now in the textiles in the top, you can see that they do follow a very similar uh, style of having like this weave going across like two, uh, this two sided, um, you know, like more reinforced textile pieces rather than having it built in within the shoe. It's just something exterior that's tying the entire shoe together. I think that's kind of cool. I think it works pretty well. It does add a few extra moving parts, but in this case, I don't see how this is really causing an issue. Now, this is where we start running into the biggest differences between the shoes in terms of their build and what specs on paper is that in the heel area, of course, the Vomero has this like rubber plastic heel guard, which adds maybe a slight amount of weight, but also reinforces the heel a lot in your shoe. In addition to having like these like pillow, you know, Achilles pillow-esque uh, kind of areas. And then the tongue of the shoe has also got like this kind of pillow feel. Whereas in the Pegasus 37 and 38 primarily, it's very minimalist. And it, despite not having a heel guard, it's the heel's not bad, but it's not nearly as strong as like the Vomero in this case. And of course the tongue doesn't have a whole lot of material on it. It's just kind of like one textile piece that's kind of, you know, jaded, slanted off to the side. And that's kind of the design that Nike went with, I think in 2020, even like 2021 in this particular case. So on paper, both shoes are very similar and kind of marketed in a similar way. Whereas I think from my like basic understanding of both shoes, 
The Vomero 16 was kind of more leaning towards being that everyday distance runner, whereas the Pegasus 37 was just more of like the everyday daily trainer and kind of had like a much wider scope of what you could do with it. That's not saying that the Vomero couldn't be like, you know, your short distance runner or whatnot, but I remember hearing that like the Vomero was supposed to be very comfortable for your long distance runs, and that kind of adds like an extra edge to this shoe on paper versus the Pegasus 37. Now, as of right now, like I think most of you know, I, I kind of look at the shoes beyond what they say on paper because there's a lot of different elements that go into the shoes, such as where they could be manufactured, how does the shoe actually feel versus its like predecessors. And these are things I've like obviously thought about more and have experienced a little bit more based on trying various samples of shoe going on. So like as I said before, the Pegasus 37s that I bought, like this one, just does not feel as good as like this Pegasus 37. It could be simply because this shoe was built somewhere else than this shoe. Maybe materials were different at the time, maybe different production, different quality assurance. It's hard to say exactly. So when we talk about this on paper, you're wondering like, why are we comparing two shoes that are almost exactly alike on paper to one another? Well, from the personal experience, right now the Vomero 16 is extremely comfortable and it's extremely, in, like, it, it has a lot of endurance for me while I'm running, which is a big deal in the case of, like, when you're running with certain shoes, you feel a little bit of fatigue. Something like a Tempo Next Percent, for example, you'll start kind of fatiguing out after a 10K. And in this particular case, the shoe will just continue rolling with you. And it might be just because, again, a lot of the Zoom X, which is kind of the biggest difference between both shoes, Zoom X running all the way across the Vomero 16 in this case, adds a lot of fire to the shoe versus something like the React, which is a little bit more responsive, not nearly as harsh on the foot, but also kind of creates a lot of, you know, stability and supposed to be marketed as like recovery. Makes the Pegasus 37 a slightly slower shoe in terms of rubber, but in terms of both of them having air zoom technology, it does kind of, you know, balance them out slightly. So that's one of the major differences, of course, is the rubber that's kind of built. Of course, the heel build is different between the both shoes. The heel collars are very different. And in terms of cons, I see a lot of people don't like this heel collar build on the Vomero so far. I have not experienced any issues with it. If you tie the shoe right, you're not going to have any issues. Just my take on it. So at this point in time, that's, I think, where we're going to lean with it. And of course, I've mentioned in my Vomero 16 first impressions that I really like this shoe a lot to replace this specific Pegasus 37. Now, is it better than the Pegasus 38? Hard to say in my personal experience, because again, on paper, both shoes are being laid out as very similar, but the major difference between both of them, of course, is maybe manufacturing, maybe time of manufacturing, where it was manufactured, and maybe the feel and like slight differences that shouldn't be there are basically there. So hopefully that was probably just enough information to kind of like piece together my thoughts on the shoes right now. But as of right now, if I had to choose between like that style Pegasus 37, the old one, and the Vomero 16, I am leaning towards the Vomero 16 and I am enjoying it right now. So I will leave the comparison video here for now. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them and just kind of get my thoughts on them. If you agree or disagree with the assessment as well, you know, leave that down below in addition to that. So that's, I think, all I've got for now. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.